also and the useful links so if you observe this agenda right it's completely most of the words you can see as a questioning only so once you uh, done your academics right so you will be out you will be pass out uh, full, with the full of questions so after btech what should i do so how should i enter so which job suits me so what is my passion so that type of questioning mind will be there uh, once you completed your btech so uh, i am going to give some little bit of exposure uh, in this vlas industry so that you can take a decision easily so whether the vlas industry suits you or or not or you are suitable for the vlas industry or not so that you can decide it uh, next slide down okay so uh, the sec, uh, first is the, what is the current situation here so if you observe right so i've been observing uh, the colleges so when we were there and present also right so uh, i've just given as a mentorship so mentorship is nothing but uh, do we have a connection between the industry and the academics right so or do we have any are you connecting with any relatives or any professionals in your circle uh, what should i do after my btech so do you have a mentor kind of thing so if you see that uh, Uh, that mountain right so one boy is jumping from here and there so if i see that left side is academics and the right side one is the industry right so do you have any mentorship who will be uh, filling those gap so is there anybody to guide you so for some people some students they might have uh, luckily they might have some uh, brothers and sisters or uh, relatives they might have uh, uh, settled in some industry or so much of some families have educated family and they can guide you but most of the cases right our parents or grandparents not yeah uh, the host talks start your video okay so uh, so unluckily or unluckily unfortunately there are so many uh, there are uh, so many students they don't have the guidance right uh, even after 10th after inter after btech only few i can say only 10% of people some guidance give, give you there are some faculty they can guide you but after completion of your btech you may not have that much contact communication between your faculty member and uh, and you right so once you passed out and taken the certificates right so there are only few people get back to the college and ask uh, get take the guidance from the professors so i i observe that there is some lack of uh, gap uh there is a gap is there between the industry and the academics so the mentorship is there are there is there is no kind of mentor and second the uh, second thing is the right goal and vision uh so once you have completed your intermediate right uh, uh with which branch i need to choose so whether i need to choose a good college or a good branch so if i choose a good branch how it my how it would be my future so are the students have that much of uh, exposure are that much of vision if you have chosen uh, actually most of them have chosen a ec so with what goal you have chosen ec so if you are studying in uh, final year right so what is your goal so whether you are going to settle in the uh, electronics industry or whether you are going to the communication industry or embedded industry so do you have any right goal technically right and non technical also how much skills i have currently once i completed my btech so how much soft skills i have how much presentation skills i have so do you have any vision or goal on your side so i see most of the people uh, most of the students are lagging in this thing so don't uh, think that i am just complaining best i am going to explain what is the current situation and the third thing is the society pressure right so you might have seen the most of movies right uh, 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 like i can give you one example in sita mova kitlo sirumal chettu in telugu movie right uh, right uh, when uh, venkatesh goes to any marriage that some people are what you are doing what you are doing so once you are completing your btech there is a so much of society pressure the students are facing right uh, yeah thank you so uh, there is so much of uh, society pressure getting so you if you were related to got job so you would you might not get the right job so you have taken some gap so again there are so many people in your real relatives even your family will also give you pressure what you are going to do you are just eating and sleeping what you are doing right so once your btech is complete they are expecting you have to do the job so that type of society pressure uh, the most of the students are facing 
currently and third thing uh, fourth thing is the college and lecturers infrastructure and subjects so i'm not pointing out uh, the colleges here but there are few colleges right so who are uh, so for the sake of money only they are running the colleges or uh, only for the reimbursement they are college they are running uh, they are running right so they are lack of lecturers and the infrastructure even uh, actually by taking the lectures also they should take uh, some uh, like a phd candidates or mtech graduates or who are well well uh, educated and more knowledgeable person so due to some other constraints or some other issues and uh, that college uh, there are some colleges don't have that much infrastructure right so they are not able to fill the gap between industry and academics right there are few colleges like that right and the last thing is the parents so uh, it's not the mistake of the parents now but they are expecting the job once you completed uh, uh, your uh, uh, graduation so they don't they are not take care of your passion and what is you are interested it to right? some people interested in uh, doing business some people are interested in some other thing right and more all the base 90% of the people parents that right, they are comparing with the other people neighbors relatives that right? they forced you to do the job uh right so which you are not interested so if you are inter interested that is fine but uh, there are some parents right uh, they are uh, forcefully uh, forcefully encouraging the people to do students to do the job so this is the current situation so what i observed uh, next slide uh, raitija okay so uh, actually uh, as a student right, so we should not question anything so uh, we should not uh, do you have the answer for all these things so unless until you have the answer you should not question it right even if the traffic jam uh, politics and everything right corruption so we are questioning everything in our society but do you have the answers so what you are doing for the society so i have been explaining about all the issues currently right so do you have the answers yes i have the answers for all those things so first so as a student what you have to do as a college student or a faculty what you have to do as a parent what you have to do right so i am not telling that you have to completely change the society first you have to change yourself right so instead of complaining i am not getting the job so are you uh, doing your responsibility right so as a student so what should have, what should you should have to do right so the four years of time is a precious time i can say that precious time right because uh, after your completion of your btech you cannot go back to your college and do the experiments or using the lab facility am i correct right so i cannot go back to my college and using all the equipments like resistors capacitors crvs so if i want to do any project i cannot go back because my graduation is over right so you have the precious time of four, four years you have to use the library right so you cannot find the most technical books in your library right so the students have to use a precious time of the four years right have you are uh, using the uh, facilities you have in your college ha are you fulfilling your skill set so are you attending any workshops related to your industry so are you reading there are so many magazines electronics for you kind of things are easy times electronics for you in your library right so have you ever read those things so do you have any technical section for the right so uh, from the last four years right i can say from the last four years right there are so much of happening uh, happening in this electronics in this industry right uh, even ravitesh has been doing so much of uh, electronics experiments so are you discussing uh, out of your academics so do you have any technical discussions out of your academics so how the industry is going so do you have the right mindset whether am i uh, right electronics engineer or not right so you should do you have the mindset of electronics engineer right from you wake up to go to bed right so there are so many uh, equipments you see in your uh, day to day life right so like uh, from electro uh, you say right nowadays the people are using the brush with uh, electric brush some people are using so from that to uh, uh, going to bed right so like mobile phone tv and uh, there are so many uh, remote even even remote so you are seeing so much of electronic equipments in your home not outside in your home it, home itself so how they are working so when you go outside traffic lights how the traffic lights will work right so are you observing in a mindset that how it will work so do you have a mindset in the electronic student electronic engineer perception so are you observing each and everything how they are working 
So if you see uh, electronics for you magazine, right? At the end, there are so many uh, real time uh, projects will be there. So are you going through? Have you tried anything that? So do you have the electronics engineer mindset or not? That is the first thing. So uh, that that is the responsibility. That is the uh, mindset the students should have. And second part, the colleges. So like uh, today, the Anurag College has given uh, this opportunity, right? To in the, uh, to interact with you, right? So that type of initiation, how many colleges are taking now? So do you, uh, are they providing any mentors to their industry related? So not only for electronic, but as you may, if you are a mechanical engineer or if you are a civil engineer, so there might have, there are so many students passed out from uh, your college, they might have settled in a good industry, right? So did they come back and explaining uh, what are the mistakes they did in their BTEC? So what you should not do? So the colleges, I'm, I'm requesting, suggesting the colleges that, so take the alumni of your, uh, who, who are our will settle you and uh, your previous students and take them back and give some mentorship to the students, juniors. And the colleges also, if the, some people are uh, encouraging to do some projects, right, the colleges should have uh, some tools kind of thing. Instead of uh, uh, doing the project in Amir Pet, right, uh, already executed IEEE project, college should encourage the students to execute innovate projects, uh, give some tools and uh, uh, give the lab facility for them, right? So only uh, why the normal colleges are becoming, what is the difference between normal colleges and IITs? So why does we tell that IIT is a good thing, right? It is not like that. So I am telling you that in the VLSA industry, right? There is nothing like IIT student or normal student. Even the when the poor college students also become an VLSA expert, it doesn't matter whether you are coming from an IIT or a normal college. Like, so they provide more of practical thing. IIT thing, right? Uh, they got some government funds and uh, they, uh, I'm giving, giving one example, like uh, with respect to the VLSA industry, right? So IIT Madras and IIT have they have their own fab kind of thing. So the people, instead of reading the fabrication process in the book itself, they are going to do that. So they know what is the process of fabrication, right? So practically they have some uh, little bit uh, 65 NM or 180 NM kind of some fab might will be there in the IITs. So they have the more practical knowledge and they interact with the mentors, interact with the industry person. So that is the reason instead of just by having the spectrum question and answers and by having and writing in the exams and getting the 90%, it would it, it, it is not at all help you. Right. So the colleges should give some that type of uh, confidence uh, to the students. And third thing is the parents, right? Uh, uh, the most of the people uh, will ask, right? Uh, when I joined some company, didn't you get a job in uh, uh, Infosys or Wipro or Tickle? Uh, sorry, TCS or Infosys or Wipro. So I'm uh, just you have to convince your parents such that those are not only the companies, right? So the people, I, we are we are not here to question them because they don't know it. As TCS and Vipro, they have thousands of people. They see the buses and they see the tags in their relatives. They thought that those are only the best companies. It is not the case. So as electronics students, so do you know what are the electronics industries? What are the electronics companies, MNCs you have? So you have to explain such that I would like to take a gap of three months or six months after my graduation, I would like to settle down in the core industry. So you have to convince your parents because they don't know, they might have not uneducated, they might have not studied and they don't know anything. They just, they need only the job in the Infosys or Wipro. They just compare with the relatives. So if you're not getting the job Infosys, it doesn't mean that you are not doing good job. So you not, you need to convince your parents and parents also encourage the students, right? So that type of, uh, I can say relationship has to be there in your parents, right? If you want, you can uh, talk with uh, your parents and the college faculty. College faculty, you can, uh, college faculty can also talk to with the parents. Don't uh, force your students to enter into a normal job. So you can make a connection between the students and, sorry, faculty and the uh, parents also. So if you are so much of pressure, if your parents are not mis listening to your words, you can take the help of your faculty and make them understand. So this is the thing. First, we have to start from ourselves. Uh, next slide. Uh, so uh, normally what the people will do after BTEC, right? Uh, so for the first thing is any job for salary only. So you can observe the course salary. So there are some people who studied in uh, 
reimbursement kind of thing so they are not uh, financially well so what they do they have to do the job after their btech so uh, they cannot spend uh, some more time and they cannot take any other courses right so for their family conditions they have to do the job so that is the first option so there are some people who want to do the job so that some people may get in the campus placements and some people uh, do the job at early hours or after um, uh, after their college or after even there are some beta graduates for the sake of money they are doing uh, ola uber so it's not the wrong thing i'm not saying so financially uh, to stable something uh, they have to do the job so that the first option is to do the job for salary so there are some people who wants only the job even though they have money and they have time right so they need only just job so what is the job it doesn't matter for them so whatever it is a software or support or bpo anything so they need just job they need to focus on family life and the money so for them uh, job is fine and second option after btech is the business so the people uh, Uh, there are some students inspired with, uh, with their uncle and uh, other relatives they would like to start a business some people have uh, entering into real estate so based on their family situations some people may start uh, uh, based on their passion they might have started one startup so the second option for the btech graduates is a business so for that you need to so much of take care that uh, you should have some little bit of, um, of capital amount of money right so there are some precautions you need to take if you start a business and third thing is the higher studies so there are some peop some students who wants to do the research kind of thing and some students yeah, wants to do yeah there some people would like to uh, hmm? settle as a pro yeah i'm requesting uh, everybody to please yes please mute whoever that is yeah 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 mera aanand aisa nahi aa thank you you can continue okay thank you so there are some people uh, some students wants to do their mtech or ms or mba right uh, yeah. uh, mtech uh, right uh, so there is two kind of thing so some some people are passionate about uh, uh, teaching so they can go for mtech some people wants to do a research kind of thing they can do go for mtech or ms so th there are some people who, who who wants to do a business and they need a post graduation there are some people can go for a mba so right uh, this is another option and the other option is a passionate job so like uh, uh, if you have already seen uh, watch the movie three idiots right uh, i can go for three idiots movie example there are three candidates were there right madhavan and amir khan that guy so i can compare with this right amir khan has passion about uh, Uh, the electronics kind of the about the projects and the work academics not the academics a real time uh, exposure amir khan and uh, if you take a madhavan he has a passion about the wildlife photography and there is some other guy i don't know his name but he is pa he is ha he has to do the job right so we see these three kind of people in our uh, society right so are you would like to become an american or you would like to become an a madhavan or you would like to become an other person so there are based on their family circumstances so either you can do a job or if you are passionate about something right there are some people who are passionate about the robotics who are passionate about the photography who are passionate about uh, doing the event management and some people uh, based on forceful of their parents they might have studied the ec but they are uh, interested in some other uh, domain right so uh, follow your passion and make it as uh, business first passion about your uh, your hobby and make it as a business and earn the money and the last thing is the government jobs so there are some parents uh, forcing the students to do a government job so there are so many graduates from the last 3 or 4 years if you go to any bank all are engineers only i don't see any economics there there are all engineers only either from civil background mechanical background right so they need we, we are not here to question them but they chosen about uh, uh, the secure job right there are some people who are passionate about to serve the society right they go for civils and uh, uh, for secure job they go for banking and they go if you want a uh, some designation kind of thing and you don't want to leave the technical they go for engineer services 
and uh, some people may write gate and get got the good rank and they may go to the bhl bl railways right so there are different opportunities it's based on their interest their passion they can choose uh, their future right so these are the options we have after the btech yeah uh, next slide arjun so so what are the opportunities in core so as a i'm from the core industry right so actually i was passionate about uh, uh, entering into the core industry either it is a uh, in first uh, when i joined uh, before joining to the ec electronics the first year i thought that ec is evergreen uh, uh, evergreen um, stream you can go to software or you can go to uh, hardware anything so that was a feedback i got from my friends i mean my friends means my relatives so i have just taken the ec but i don't know where should i settle down in the uh, uh, electronics industry so after two or three years uh, so there are some faculty who with by, by them i inspired a lot and that i decided to settle in the electronics industry itself so so what are the opportunities in core so one is the embedded systems right i can i uh, embedded systems means uh so ravitej can clearly means you can get, take the guidance from the ravitej right so as he has been doing so many experiments in embedded systems so what is there in the embedded systems what are the skills you needed so if you decided yourself at the second year or third year itself you could have focused on those subjects more right instead of academics you can go out to the industry and what they are doing so if you want to go into the embedded systems tree you may need to learn the embedded c and the microcontroller with the passion right so not only just to answer the questions in the btec so you might have uh, take more exposure on these uh, industry and second the communication part so as you are electronics and communication engineer there are some people uh, right uh, uh, who want who would like to enter into the communication industry like uh, uh, telecom right uh, and railways right so you have subject like signals and systems and communication engineering and uh, uh, so Uh, of my experience at what i observed is uh, the people who would like to settle down in the communication industry uh, they have to do the mtech uh, from the reputed university like uh, any university i'm just giving some examples in iit or nit but uh, it's better to do a pg degree uh, if you would like to settle down in the communication industry such that you will be getting you will be entering into a higher higher designation and you will be giving a some uh, good work uh, in with respect to the communication so right like uh, not only the government in the private sector also that right, metro rail is there and the railways are there signaling and systems are there so uh, for um, to monitor the signals so there are so many opportunities in the communication but better to do a uh, go for a uh, higher education for this and uh, the last thing is the vlsi uh, so i'm just mentioning only three right uh, the vlsi uh, it's my uh, main objective right here here today so what you should study so vlsi uh, like uh, you might have learned that right, uh, cmos what is a cmos and what is a bjt and fed and uh, basic electronics and digital electronics so i'm going to cover in coming slides more go to next slides rantija uh, so so these are the all uh, all uh, question and answers and the current situations what we have to do so now we are entering into the primary topic uh, today uh, what does that mean by uh, uh, vlsi industry so you have the subject of vlsi the fine year so as a definition uh, what does that mean by vlsi means uh, it's a very large scale integration acronym of vlsi it is the process of creating an integrated circuit by combining millions of mos transistors onto a single chip so if you clearly observe if you clearly read this uh, right right so here the main uh, terminals right main words are integration right and mos transistors combining millions of mos transistors right so here we are combining millions of mos transistors and connecting them and we are making an circuit by integrating all those things into a single chip that we call as a vlsi industry right so if if you observe uh, the image here right so he is holding one chip the processor kind of thing 
and above that uh, you it is not that cheap but i have taken uh, from the google i have taken this picture so if you uh, observe this cheap right so there are some boxes color boxes are there right so what are those let us uh, let us see that uh, uh, let us take an example of laptop so what are the outputs of your laptop uh, i can say or inputs the laptop right so outputs of the laptop might be the display what you are seeing so what are the inputs the laptop so you have the usb port input or output it can work as a right so usb port is there hdmi port is there right and there are some graphics part is there there are some audio module is there right so if you take the example of laptop it is combining of different different modules usb hdmi graphics sound visual right so if you observe any chip right so it will be divided into different parts so uh, there are some modules the boxes right you can uh, you can treat it as some boxes only for the usb module some boxes only for the hdmi some boxes for the graphics some boxes for the uh, you can say sound so complete chip will be divided into different parts and each and every part has millions of transistors and we are connecting them and making the output from a single chip so you see vlsi industry has so much of products i'm going to explain in the coming slides processors uh, and the memory cards graphics so whatever it is the integrated circuit it is from the vlsi only so have you ever opened your laptop or your motherboard what are what are those so you if you open your motherboard right so you see there are so many uh, components like uh, capacitor black color capacitor so there transistor there tra transistors are there right so have you ever seen uh, what is a capacitance for those cap capacitances right so at the same time the same time we are integrating the processor which can include all the modules combining all those mat modules and giving giving you the uh, required output so this is the whole process uh, the what the vls is going to do uh, next uh, actually we have 5 minutes of time right and uh, using the slicer they'll make it as like a uh, see wafers so they are similarly like our uh, cds earlier we used uh, we used to have the cd set to watch the movies and listen to the audio right so it's kind of a uh, wafers so we call them as blank wafers nothing will be there so after the creating the wafer so there are almost 20 to 30 processing steps like uh, lithography doping etching so you will be studying all these steps uh, in your academics so what are those steps so after that uh, once they fabricate the chip uh, they will cut it out and they test the dice what are the dice here the tested dice here right so actually once uh, uh, there will be kind of a patterned wafer here you can observe that blank wafer is there patterned wafer is there so patterned wafer is nothing but there there will be some certain uh, uh, pattern will be there so they just uh, like uh, in the pongal time the girls used to uh, rangoli right so there are the girls who doesn't know how to make a rangoli they use some patterns pongal time right so the pattern of the flowers and uh, leaves right they just they add some floor over that pattern and uh, it will be completely replicated on the ground at the same at the same way we have some patterns like uh, with the metal patterns we have so those those will be replicated using the process of lithography they will just uh, trace the pattern on this wafer so after the wafer is patterned they will just cut with the dicer uh, like uh, while you are making any mysore pak or any sweet right so what they do first they make it as a liquid and they pour into the one plate and with the knife with the play, using of the knife they will cut into the pieces sweets right in the same way they will just cut these these chips using the dice uh, dicer but not sure how many dice will work or not so there will be a die tester will be there it will test whether it is functions properly or not so if you see there are some cross marks in the left side cross mark for the chips right so those are the chips they they are not working properly right so after that there are only some we can 
call it as yield in terms of industry we call them as yield yield means good chips by total chips so if you are fabricating 100 chips so there might be 90 or 80 chips may work we can definitely expect 10 to 20 chips will not work so we throw the 20 chips and uh, rest of the 80 or 90 chips we can go for the package package nothing but so i am just giving you one example so if you would like to buy a biscuit biscuit right uh, biscuit uh, from the company it has to be uh, fully packaged right so if you have if you find any hole in the biscuit packet it will become softened soft so you are not interested to eat that biscuit right so the back the package is that much important so it's same case with the chip also so if you don't package it uh, properly it will not uh, work properly also so the package is that much important so after the package also you need to test it whether it is working or not so tested package days after after packaging also there are some dies may not work so we have to throw them out and what are the chips which are good at so we are going to ship them so this is the whole process of uh, uh, how we make a chips so you can there are a lot of videos in the youtube uh, so I'm, I'm not working in intel but i've just uh, uh, searched in the youtube and got that uh, overall idea how the fabrication will happen go to next slide so from this onwards uh, i'll just go a little bit faster <clears throat> means uh, uh, it's complete uh, uh, there is a kind of two domains in the vlsi one is the front end and back end we can call it as the front end and back end what does it mean by front end and what, what does it mean by <clears throat> back end so front end means it's kind of they first we need to have some idea of what you are going to make so idea has to be implemented so so you should have uh, if you would like to uh, implement uh, you would like to manufacture uh, something right first you should have idea second thing is uh, rtl coding right uh, uh, what how should i connect so what is the what 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 should be the logic in that and i need to do uh, rtl coding so if i take an example of and gate so if you want to uh, build the and gate right so your idea is to make if i give you one and one the output should be one so that is your idea so for that what you have to do so a z equal to a into b so that is your rtl coding so if i would like to get a and b so which gate right you might have studied in your digital electronics what gate will function as uh, when it is one one uh, it should be one so that is the and gate right so that is uh, so you that is called synthesis in the synthesis uh, a into b will be converted into a and b right so before the rtl uh, after the rtl coding they do some function simulation and coverage analysis so that will be getting no once you are entering into industry but at the right time as per your knowledge even though i explained you may not understand that much better but the logic synthesis means if it is a and a into b uh, what is the logic that you have to use so you have to use and gate so after that dft synthesis means whether the and gate is working properly or not in the logic mode not the function physically mode so there are some vector generation so atpg vector generation means uh, they'll give some inputs uh, like uh, 1 and 1 1 and 0 0 1 and they'll just check it out whether i'm getting 1 or 0 as my expectation is working or fine in the logical model they'll check that so after that what should i do uh, the left side portion is completely i can say that the front end kind of thing and the right side portion which is starting from the floor planning power planning placement right so this is called physical design back end we can call it as a physical design why i am calling physical design means here we are converting that a and b to physically visible and gate so you might have studied the stick diagrams how do we make a uh, and gate and and gate using the cmos or nmos so you might have drawn those right so floor planning means where should i put my and gate right so if you take your laptop where should be the your usb port it has to be the right side of your laptop bottom side so where should be your display it should be in front of you so where should be the keyboard it keyboard should be uh, uh, under your arms under your fingers right so where should be the mouse pointer and where should be the hdmi cable so that type of which model has to be sit where so that would be decided at the floor plan stage right so after that uh, you have to do the power planning power planning means 
how this and get will work you might have studied um, how we can how the channel will be uh, created from the drain to source so you need to operate you need to give some operating voltage through the gate so you will be controlling the channel using the operating voltage so my and how my and gate will be getting the power right so how my uh, your laptop getting the power where where the port has to be at the same same way how my and gate should get the power that we will do at the power planning right and the placement so not only the and gates if you want to build a thousand and gates so thousand and gates for uh, uh, to get a usb module thousand uh, or gates uh, to get a hdmi module so the application so based on the applications where it has to be sit that would be done by the placement cts cts means we have you study that what is a flip flop uh, sequential elements how we can control it uh, whether you study that not how the flip flop will work or write a, what is the difference between flop and latch how it will be controlled so there will be input like a clock clock will be the input for them so when it has to be on when it has to be hot that will be done by cts clock to synthesis so you will be studying all those things routing uh, routing means uh, if you and gate is there and next uh, one more and gate is there how will be you will be connected uh, i can give you an example so in your house refrigerator will be there tv will be there and um, fan will be there let us say these are the three logical components in your chip here you can observe that your chip is your home so this and gate means your fan let us say tv fan refrigerator i am taking three examples so how these three components will work they has to be get the power from the source where is the power source from the uh, nearest pole so we are giving power from nearest pole we are taking those and operating uh, these things right uh, tv fan or thing so at the same way the logical cells like and gates nor gates and everything so there are billions of transistors like billions of and gates billions of nor gates will be there in a single chip so they have to be get some power and they have to be connected how your refrigerator connection to right refrigerator connection to the power pole how it is connecting through the wires so at the same way the logical the standard cells will be connecting to through some wires the routing right so how the routing will happen and static timing analysis Sta static timing analysis means i can take an example real time example like uh, uh, when you touch your mobile right so when you open click on the facebook link it has to come within fraction of seconds right so how it is coming how they are before uh, manufacturing the chip how they are calculating within response of this much time this has to be open right so they have to meet some timing requirements so by this time it has to work within these many cycles it has to give output so that type of analysis will work and after that the gate level simulation so what are the gates we have worked whether it is working properly or not that will be checked and the final thing is the gds2 uh, it's kind of a pattern i already explained you right so there will be a pattern we will be giving to the fabrication process fabrication process so that the layout form we called as a gds right so it's overall what we are doing in the vlsi industry means we are virtually uh, fabricating the chip in the system itself using some tools we are implementing the chip so whatever the chip i am using whatever the cell phone i am using it has to work in the summer it has to work in the winter it has to work in the uh, sahara desert it has to work in the polar conditions right so there are some certain temperatures range it has to work and there is certain performance it has to meet right so we are virtually checking all these conditions right uh, how much uh, temperature it has to work so my mobile phone can work from minus 1 degree centigrade to even though the temperature increases to 40 50 degree centigrade so whatever might be the temperature my chip has to work efficiently so we are creating virtual conditions in our lab a lab means uh, there are some tools using those some tools we are virtually checking whether my chip will work in those extreme conditions then only we can go for the fabrication of the chip so this is the overall work we are going to do in your uh, vlsi field so depends on the work it will be divided as a front end and the back end so front end part is completely kind of coding and uh, programming kind of thing back end is nothing but your 
clearly going to visible the AND gates, OR gates, flip flops, latches in your screen, how they are connecting, how the timing. So physical design means how those are physically placed, how the timing that will be, you can visual clearly. But uh, in the front end side, it's completely kind of alphabets like AND gate, OR gate. You need to write the code and Unix environment. Uh, this is the overall whether you understand it or not. Uh, please uh, note it down or uh, remember it. You will definitely understand once you go through your some subject is completed or when you enter into the inter industry. Uh, next slide, uh, Ravtija. Some kind of technical. Uh, I'm going to actually uh, complete exposure of not only the career, uh, so how the work would be. Uh, I'm trying to explain. So whatever the example I've taken, right, uh, and get. So uh, how it would be in the RTL, how it would be in the netlist after synthesis, right? So if you want to uh, build an AND gate uh, using NAND, how you are going to implement using NAR. So we call them NAND or NAR or universal gates, right? So how, uh, but uh, if you see uh, any chip, right? Uh, if you open any uh, virtual mode of any chip, you see AND gate in this fashion, similarly. So what are the stick diagram we have? You are going to implement. Uh, uh, you are you are going to see only this pattern only. Uh, and you, if you open uh, any any chip means virtually, you can see this model. So we are going to give this model. It is a pattern. It's kind of a rangoli kind of thing. We will be giving this pattern to the fabrication chip, fabrication center. So so they don't know what is the application of this chip. They just blindly use. Uh, uh, they just replicate this pattern. Uh, so this is an example I, I thought of uh, thought of giving you what we are going to do. Next slide. Uh, so what are the applications of VLSA? Right, uh, these are consumer electronics like a uh, uh, mobile phone, uh, laptop, so wireless and wireless and electronic devices, automation, medical medical electronics. Right, so now uh, which is the field, the medical field uh, in the electronics, there are a uh, uh, huge demand for this medical electronics nowadays. And the automotive, right? Uh, automotive electronics means uh, so in the future, right? Uh, you are going to see the cars without the drivers, right? So you are car is capable of drive itself and it can park itself right so you are so already implemented it uh, it is in progress uh, but it takes some more time uh, to entering into the market but it's automotive electronics the electronics going to play huge role in coming coming years aerospace and defense right so nowadays we are getting some clashes with the china right so we may use the china chips right so there is a kind of a data data stolen issues right so uh, Defense also using uh, so many electronics chips, MEMS, bioelectronics. So you, anywhere in the coming future is complete of electronics. I can say complete. Whether it is a, a mobile electronics, like a, a, you are even you are going to see uh, not reasonable electronics also by operating uh, with the, with own your hand. Like uh, uh, you can dial uh, from your hand itself. So if you just uh, uh, where your small chip in your uh, like a watch or a band, right? Uh, like a ring, you are going to call to anybody. So that kind of uh, uh, infrastructure, that that's kind of applications we are going to see. So whatever the electronics industry chips, uh, blindly remember that it is the product of VLS, uh, VLS only. Either it's a direct or indirect. Uh, next slide. Uh, So currently, uh, where are we now? Where is the currently currently industry where it is now, right? Uh, so according to ITRS, so which which gives the roadmap of semiconductors, international technology roadmap. So uh, you might have uh, 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 studied or learned that uh, there is a term called technology. So when you touch any VLSI guy, uh, which technology you are working on? So that is the first question they'll ask you. What is the technology? Technology is not using that. Thing, but the length of the channel you just remember length of the channel is that uh, the mass to drain what is the channel length that we call it as technology so from the 1971 the channel was 10 micrometer now 2020 the people are working on 5 nanometer in 2022 it will be going to 3 nm so earlier we used bjt's fat and mass and cmos CMOS now we are into FinFET. So already uh, so many products are out uh, with the FinFET. 
right and uh, coming coming after finfed there are uh, carbon nanotubes tubes they are coming out but not at not at uh, there some some research 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 is going on but currently we are at cnm so we are at uh, finfed technology uh, so we used uh, different uh, uh, architecture of the transistors so i can give you one practical example right so earlier so uh, uh, if you want to uh, uh, occupy uh, so if you have 100% 100% if they want to uh, sit in a one room let us assume that so there is a one room so there are 100 people are sitting on chairs please visualize this there is a room in that room 100 people are sitting in chairs so here the room is cheap the persons are the transistors let us assume so in 1970s there are 100 people could sit in a one room on chairs so now i have a requirement such that i am not going to increase the size of the room but i have to accommodate 200 people so what have to do so i just removed those chairs and uh, uh, ask them to sit on the floor so now i can accommodate 200 people at the same way i could accommodate 200 transistor in the same area but i have a requirement such that i need to accommodate 300 people now means i have to place 300 transistor in the same room so what should i do so i have to uh, request the people such that please stand so that 300 people can place in the same room so it's kind of the architectural changes are going on in the transistors like bjt how the channel formed and uh, fin uh, mosfet how the channel formed and uh, finfet how the channel is farming so the architecture of transistor is cha changing so that is the reason we are reducing the channel length and we could able to accommodate more number of transistor in the same area and we are able to get the more applications earlier uh, if you want any uh, one application right so we need a laptop or computer but nowadays we are using only single cell phone for all applications so why the size is less but we are accommodating we are placing so much of application modules in the same area even within less area so here what is changing is the transistor architecture of the transistor is changing right so now, now please remember that now we are at finfet right the the forming of channel is you can google it how what is the finfet how the channel is forming between the source and drain so what are the issues we are getting how we are uh, resolving those issues right so this is all about the technology what what, what we are now so you keep on uh, uh, getting the uh, updates right snapdragon this one if when you buy a mobile snapdragon uh, this version snapdragon this one, qualcomm of snapdragon this version so have you ever observed what are the changes from this version to the last version how the frequency got changed how the clock cycles are changed have you ever observed as the electronic student so not only the what is the uh, percentage of uh, discount i'm getting at the same time what are the technical terms are changing from mobile version to another mobile version so that you need to check so once apple released the a14 processor recently they uh, released a14 process with the 5nm so earlier a13 was 7nm earlier a12 that was with the uh, you can say 10nm so uh, they are releasing the processors of apple uh, releases a process processor with less technology uh, you can google it and you can you will be getting to know what does it mean by technology so this is uh, go to next slide uh, right so this is all about the technology how the industry how what is the work going on so now the primary topic uh, like uh, what are the companies are working on so here there are three types of companies mainly like one is a fabrication and is a eda and third is a design so what does it mean by fabrication means there are um, uh, so once we uh, uh, we we are ready with our pattern right so it has to be manufactured manufactured means india don't manufacture india doesn't manufacture anything india till uh, there are some riches are going on but india is not capable of manufacturing any chip uh, it could able to manufacture only the 180 nm uh, there is a one fab is there in the chandigarh uh, there uh, we can create we can manufacture one chip at 180 nanometer now the industry is at 5 nanometer just observe where the india is right so 
industry is running at 5 nm and 3 nm india still at fabricating 180 nanometer we are far away from fabricating the chips so we have two major uh, uh, there are four major fabricant companies like tsmc taiwan semiconductor manufacturing company which is a, which is in taiwan and the global foundries which is in uh, different uh, multiple locations are there especially in uh, south korea and uh, china and samsung it has has its own foundry samsung mobiles has its own foundry intel has its own foundry right so there are some fabulous companies like uh, qualcomm is there it doesn't have the uh, uh, own fa own fab and amd is there it is it doesn't have the own fab so they will uh, virtually create the chips and they will give these chips to the fabrication companies to manufacture it so amd and qualcomm they are not uh, having uh, uh, fabs but they are giving uh, these chips to the tsmc or the gf so based on their application and uh, this is the one type of companies fabrication companies so there is no company situated in uh, india uh, most of them are uh, in china and south korea and uh, us so if you want to settle in the fabrication right you have to do the uh, graduation uh, sorry post graduation in the related to the fabric uh, fabrication and uh, you can settle there uh, in the taiwan or uh, uh, where it is located and second thing is the uh, eda tools electronic design automation so you have some tools in your electronics labs also like that we use some tools uh, synapses and cadence tools so to do all this uh, 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 like implementing the AND gate connecting so it's uh, we cannot uh, do it manually right uh, if uh, millions of transistors are there we cannot uh, manually connect them so we need to use some tools like placement cts timing there are so many tools like the major vendors of tools are synapses and cadence so these two companies mentor graphics also so these three three or four are companies will provide the required tools to implement these things and uh, the third thing is the design so like amd qualcomm uh, there are in the design also there are two type of companies one is product and the service based product based companies like intel amd qualcomm so they directly do the r and d and uh, release the products like uh, processors graphic cards and the second comp second type of company is service based service based company is uh, it's overall 100% 90% are service based only 10% companies are product based so these 90% service based companies they'll give staff they'll give engineers to the company or they'll take one project and uh, they'll service and give the project uh, they will uh, do the project and give it back to the product based company so the service based company mainly focusing on the staff majorly and few companies will be working on the design side also so example i can give as irisent uh, uh, soctronix mirafra mosship so there are few companies even in the hyderabad also related to service based uh, go to next slide uh, ritija so okay so uh, where should i focus in my btech so if you would like to interested it to settle down in the vls industry so where should i focus the first thing is the cmos right so uh, while you study the base cmos means uh, you you know technically i'm not going great so how the cmos how it will work and the stick diagrams and uh, what is the fabrication process so the industry people basically wants uh, do you have uh, fundamentals do you know the fundamentals so they if you go for any uh, fresher into definitely they will ask uh, um, what is the threshold voltage uh, what is the technology what is the gate uh, what is the um, uh, channel right uh, so what is the difference between mosfet so they can ask the questions because you studied in your academics they can ask these questions and the major the uh, the major subject is the digital electronics so you should be sound knowledge in the digital electronics right uh, uh, flip flops coders enco uh, encoders and decoders how we can convert uh, uh, d flip flop and flip flip flop into other uh, other other flip flops right uh, and uh, k maps so digital electronics set you should be know in and out i can clearly say you should know in uh, each and everything related to the digital electronics if you would like to enter into the wireless industry because we are going to deal with all these uh, logic gates and flip flops and latches and analog electronics so there is some uh, some another domain analog related like op amps right so there is analog uh, related uh, domain also uh, related to the plsi so if you are good at uh, should uh, entering into the analog right so we good at analog electronics you should have a basics and the device physics right uh, what is the resistance formula so r is equal to rho l by a 
right what does it mean by uh, kirch of laws and uh, thevenin's theorem so everything uh, network theory you should know everything because we in the real time i am going to apply you have to go uh, you have to apply this that knowledge and you should not forget all these things and uh, verilog and vhdl as i told you right uh, front end right so front end said they they mainly focusing on uh, this verilog and vhdl uh, uh, experts and the basic python perl tikl unix because you are you are not going to work on the microsoft os right so you are going to work on the unix environment or linux environment so uh, you should be capable of know all these commands copy commands move commands uh, like grip commands so you should be the basic commands you know so nowadays all the tools methodologies are going into the python so uh, if you would like to entering into a tool methodology like eda company if you would like to Uh, settle your career in the eda company uh, you should be uh, more proficient in your scripting language also even the c and c plus is basic these are the basic uh, is any way you learned it and other than the academics what you are focusing on you must focusing on the electronics uh, uh, magazines read the electronics magazines and uh, you should follow the instagram pages and uh, so we follow so many celebrities right so why don't you why can't you uh, follow the pages of the company ceos and uh, electric industrialists so and uh, if you follow the amd page if you follow the intel page so they will definitely publish uh, uh, what are their products coming products so just instead of following uh, no not instead of you have to follow uh, not only the uh, celebrities you have to follow the celebrities of electronic industry also and you have to follow the twitter pages of all the ceos all the hrs all the hrs right so that you can be updated the industry right and uh, you have to focusing on the intel uh, intel videos so there is a limitation to the faculty also right so within the time of uh, academic syllabus completion and uh, uh, syllabus right so they may be focusing completely focusing on the academics which is there in the books but it's their responsibility but what is your responsibility what is your responsibility means you have to go through advanced topics you need to listen the intel videos how they are telling right so uh, it's my sincere request to the students go through all the intel videos like uh, in the vlfa we have videos for front end and back end verilog vhdl everything everything will be there so then go uh, go and watch those videos and if you have any doubts get clarified with your, with your faculty members yeah go to next slide so these are the main uh, main things you have to focus on your btech so and uh, as i already told you right so how what is the industry wants currently so industry want fundamentals 40% so if you have 90% your btech it doesn't matter even i tell uh, clearly saying again it doesn't matter even though if you have seven tier it is just qualification entering into a uh, industry right it just they want only 70 or 75 percent but i am not saying that you should not get the 90 percent but you should have some practical knowledge than the fundamental right so if you are sleeping also i command wake up uh, ask you one question about the electronics you should able to answer right so uh, the fundamental you should be such a such good enough and second thing is the required skills not only uh, if you know the knowledge it doesn't matter so how you are presenting your knowledge that is more important do i do i have some uh, communication skills it doesn't related to your language whether you are communicating with it properly or not it does matters so do you have the presentation skills so have you ever given any presentation on your academics so have you ever taught any subject any topic to your third year or second year students so did you ha have this much of practice presentation skills because once you entering into the industry weekly you have to give the status to your managers and your seniors so at that time you have to present it so make your use the presentation skills and what are the industry standard projects are you are doing are you doing any already executed amir pet related project or are you are doing your own project so do you have any innovative ideas to do the projects if you want to do a uh, project uh, entering into embedded industry do project in embedded i am just suggesting if you want to do entering wireless industry uh, you can do the project so much of projects at the front end Right, go for it and do it. Even the third year and final year, if unless if you have the project opportunity, do the projects in. Uh, how much time we have? Uh, uh yeah, how much? Okay, so we have five more minutes. Uh, no problem. I will schedule one more meeting. Not an issue. Okay, fine. Uh, yeah. So. 
yeah and uh, what are the projects you are going to do it matters because if you uh, if you prepare once you prepare your resume what is there so yes you can just mention your percentage that's all how special your resume compared to others so have we there are so much of uh, uh fest i can say electronics or projects or like uh, some other companies uh, sorry other colleges they do some electronics related projects so have you ever gone to other companies have you ever gone to any other like a bigger uh, bigger uh, uh, colleges and uh, have you presented any technical topics have you done any technical presentations so how your resume is different from others so did you do any real time project right so overall 70 members of electronics ec students in which i am different not only the percentage percentage point of view how i am different how my resume uh, different to others so you should uh, uh, your resume it doesn't feel that uh, your it's a fresh resume it has to be filled with different type of projects right so the people industry people should, uh, they get uh, astonished so in that way you have to prepare your resume so i have attended these many workshops i have given presentations to these many things so you can fill it with all all your extra extra activities related to the electronics and uh, what are the different projects innovative projects you did so you need to uh, uh, create a resume in such a way that it should attract because uh, there are so many people get filtered out by seeing the resume itself so if time permits i can take one more session the resume itself only the resume and the soft skills right uh, if you see right the soft skills i just kept as 5% right so if you have the above the fundamentals required skills and industry standard projects right there is only 5% especially the wireless industry looks soft skills like how we are dressing right and how we are entering into the uh, interview room how we are sitting so that kind of it matters a lot for the first impression but it it will not decide your future it will not decide your qualification it will not decide your employment right so soft skills you should have it plays a little bit less uh, less role compared to and the thing is college brand so from which college you are it doesn't matter right so i passed out from some college uh, one college uh, i passed out from holy mary college actually uh my colleague he passed out from iit bombay it doesn't matter we both are working together so i'm not uh, so uh, let, let us say right the people who, who who are coming from which background it doesn't matter even the college brand also it is only for getting into the placement college placement but so from which college which area you are coming from it not it is not at all matter whether you come from iit or whether you come from a normal college right it doesn't matter if you have the skills and others 2% are there so there are so many other things right so these are the things industry wants from the students so i am don't get uh, uh, like that i have only less percentage and uh, i am not passed out from different college I means uh, famous college and i am from rural background so that type of mentality you should not have it so this much industry wants so how much time one minute right okay so this is the industry wants Uh, go to next slide so that uh, yeah the coming i'm going to cover so uh, this is how i should enter into the industry uh, industry right yeah so uh, so i've i've been telling the story complete story but uh, what really you want is so then how should i enter into the industry so the first option is the campus placements so there are some colleges like uh, uh, not like uh, some colleges like uh, uh, nits or iits even the best colleges in the hyderabad or bangalore uh, they are going to the colleges even amd and info synopsis and intel they are going to the colleges and recruit the people the students as intern and uh, they'll uh, recruit as interns after 6 months they'll get permanent so that is the one option and uh, so you talk with your placement officer and before that you have to be uh, proficient you have to be uh, master in your subjects then you can request your placement officer or the professors right so are we getting any industry related uh, companies to our college or not so if you have the interest and if you 
uh, and show them the interest right definitely they will try and get them for you in the campus placements right this is the first option you can enter into the industry and uh, for that matter right so it's kind of a smooth path for you so you don't need to do any efforts to entering into the uh, effort, uh, entering into the industry so that is a smooth for for uh, smooth path for you and uh, the second is uh, uh, work as an intern and get permitted it is same case with the campus placements as an individual also so if you uh, after your mtech or after your btech so there are some companies they'll uh, like off campus they'll call the students uh, as an intern even for some service based companies and some product based companies also it's rare but uh, definitely they'll call for the people if they are unable to go to the college and uh, if they open for all right they'll get good candidates instead of going to one college so sometimes the people can offer uh, the people from outside also so there is a chance to get an internship so once the internship over internship is over you will get permitted there and the third thing is the so most of the people uh, like uh, so if the if you if the people do the uh, mtech or mtech in microelectronics in the gate by by if you are uh, doing mtech in the iit or nit so there is a chance of getting campus placements is good so you'll be getting a uh, job definitely or if you do any ms kind of thing means if you go to abroad do ms in the uh, vlsi domain right so definitely will be you can entering into a college or you can enter into the vlsi industry but 90% of the cases 90% of the people will not get the gate good rank and so 90% of people will not uh, do the mtech in iit right even the vtech in iit so so what they have to do so my focusing on those candidates only so they have to do the camp uh, uh, job oriented course in the institute so there are uh, some service based companies and uh, they will give you a training so once uh, training is over uh, they can send you your resumes to the product based companies or other service based companies and you will get the job but so they are not going to give you a 100% placement so the conditions are applied so so whatever the skills you learned in the btech those are not sufficient entering into a vlsi industry unless until you are from a iitn but it doesn't mean that only iitn or nit are good college students get the vlsi industry no so you are also eligible but it's kind of a little bit uh, longer path you have to take that means you have to take a job oriented course like a, a vlsi in the front end and vlsi uh, course in the physical design and vlsi physical uh, in the layout design so there are some certain uh, courses in the market like physical design layout design uh, standard cell layout design and uh, verification verification so so there are different uh, uh, kind of uh, courses are there oh, all are vlsi only but whether if you want to enter into a front end or a back end so depends on you have to choose your courses so there are some institutes they give only the course they will not give you any placement they just send you your resumes to the service based or product based companies but there are some other institutes which combines both they will give you the they will take the money from you and they will give you six months or three months course to you so after that if you have performed well so they place you in their company or they will not do anything so here there also you have to perform well so the students from normal colleges so it will be they may need to take three months or six months gap or while doing their their fourth two like a fourth year second semester they need to go for uh, in order to don't waste time so they can go for these courses at the fourth year second semester and they can spend six months of time get knowledge and once you are passed out you can apply or you can get the job directly so this is the students who are not uh, uh, getting the campus placements so but the job oriented course is mandatory so actually if i if I, the the charge right what is the fee right almost uh, uh, it can varies from 40000 to 150000 
uh, the course fee for the uh, private institutions so there are some government institutes also like uh, cdac and uh, jagruti technosis so uh, they'll conduct uh, so you might have already known and you even your faculty can guide you in this way so it, there will be uh, entrance exam for these things so you need to qualify in those exams after that interview will be there uh, then only you'll get the seat so they will give you uh, government will sponsor and uh, you can train you can get trained and uh, you can place into a reputed company government institutes so it's kind of free of cost and uh, uh, there is some other private institute called veda iit uh, it can train you in embed systems and the physical design and logical design and they have the diploma program and ms program uh, collaboration with the jntu uh, there also you have to clear the exam and you need to clear the interview then only you'll be getting the placed uh, veda it is the only institute uh, i can confidently say which can give you 100% placement so there are uh, tens of almost 50 to 60 institutes are there in bangalore and hyderabad but they will they will give you uh, based on their reputation they will give the placement but not uh, uh, once you complete the course they may take some time uh, you to place in some other company right so but they are uh, chargeable uh, all the institutes so these are only the three institutes actually i kept in mind that the people who would not like to invest money uh, to entering into a job so for them these are the three institutes you can easily uh, not easily you have to Uh, prepare yourself so to crack the any exam you should be good enough in uh, reasoning and uh, you can refer an uh, rs agarwal book and uh, any any other thing aptitude kind of thing you should be master in it and uh, the covid uh, and uh, corona it's it might have helped you a lot because you have so much of uh, time right the traveling time of your college right so you have, might have saved so much of time so this is a good time you to uh, brush up your skills like uh, you uh, to crack the veda it i can give you an example you have to be master in aptitude and you have to be master in the c language right uh, which are the basics and the digital electronics so these are the three things you it must uh, you have to be master in that so whether you write any entrance exam related to any institute like cdac or jagruti or veda it you have to be master in these three subjects right so if you want to go for a i have a money i can uh, spend 1 lakh rupees for that you can go for any other private institutes but uh, so it may take time to entering into the job so if you are lucky definitely you will be getting a job but uh, it takes time uh, next slide arithi ji so why i should take a additional course so you have question right once my btech is completed after my btech i am getting a software job so why can't i get a job in the vls industry right so there are so many people got the job after their btech they directly entering into the infosys and tcs and uh, they are doing the job why can't i job, why can't i do job in uh, vls industry after my completion of btech you can do but if you are from a uh, if you don't get a job in campus placements Uh, actually the industry has to train you at least 3 to 4 months the tools we are using in our industry which are very costly so it's not like a handling one laptop and installing one open source software it is not the case so we need to buy a license which are uh, costs a lot and uh, uh, if you want to train you the company uh, should give you one experienced person right so currently the company uh, the vlsa companies are not interested uh, to invest on you right uh, for 6 months of time and it can uh, set a resource persons for you for 6 months so they are not going to invest money on you for the software training it will not uh, cost that much money but uh, uh, for the vlsa industry at least it takes 3 months of time even they have to allocate one senior persons for you right so that is the reason all the product based companies are not taking the freshers so they are taking freshers from the service based companies so what are the service based companies these service based companies take the money from you they will train you and they will take more billing from the 
product based companies and they'll give you less salaries less salaries so if i uh, i can give an example as a fresher you can enter into a uh, mnc based company from one service based company as a contractor so if you are getting a 15000 uh, uh, 15000 uh, let us say 20000 salary from service based company the service based company will take 50000 from the product based company right so they take more billing on you so they'll get the more profit on you so that is the reason they place you so in our industry there are so much of service based companies less product based companies right so so the product based companies that is the reason it is very it is little but difficult to entering into a bls industry as a fresher because the company is not going to invest time or money on you because those are costly so so if i get a service which one i should choose service based or product based i am just recommending first three years you have to work in a service based company service based company means they work for the product based company or they can send the uh, resources to the mnc company so if you are uh, join a startup company service based company you will be getting a more exposure because there are only few people and uh, you have to work a lot uh, to the product get to be delivered on time right and uh, if you compare with the product based company right in the product based company even though the salary is good uh, the one work will be divided into different people so there you may get a less exposure better to spend on uh, better to work on startup or service based company for first 3 years i'm just and don't uh, uh, think about the salary for now uh, definitely you will be getting a good salaries but uh, to get a more technical knowledge to work in a service based company uh, next slide so then how can i get the job references right so i'm just giving you some examples uh, some uh, recommendations for you just uh, through the institutes as i already told you or in the campus placement so you get the job references and second thing is you have to build the network uh, with uh, your relatives and seniors who already there in the industry you can take the profile and uh, you can take uh, uh, the contacts of your seniors who already settled in this industry you can get the uh, contact numbers and address from your college so you can check it out them and ask them who are there in this industry and get connected with them so that is a major thing and even just connect with the relatives who who are there in this industry so that they can give you one exposure uh, this kind of exposure and uh, you should create one linkedin page as a student a linkedin page you have to create and you should follow all the companies uh, linkedin pages and follow all the hr pages especially hr pages talent acquisition team so for every company there will be hr kind of thing and there will be a uh, talent acquisition team will be there just follow all just follow all and build a resume so that if they can post anything definitely you are going to know so create a linkedin page follow all the talent acquisition team members for all the electronics based companies just google it what are the electronics companies and uh, uh, even the even even in the linkedin pages also you can get all the companies linkedin pages follow them all and uh, subscribe alerts from the, all the portals so you know all these things but i'm just brushing up so prepare a good resume and subscribe alerts from all the job portals naukri and everything and uh, you should go to the each and every company website go to intel website go to amd web, web page and synopsis cadence all the companies web page go there and uh, uh, click on careers page and what are the expectations they are looking for what are the skills you need just upload the resume there if you have any options so there will be you will be having a option just upload the resume so who knows right when you are getting a call from when they require and when you are getting a uh, uh, so so many so much of resumes will filter out if your resume is such a way that they can it it will attract the people and definitely they will call you so please upload your resumes and career page and the last thing is personally visit the offices and familiar with the environment right so if you would like to work in a ecl company right go to ecl or if you work so they will not allow you but uh, you should have a passion in mindset that it's kind of you might have read that book that right? secret book so there will be some sub subconscious mind uh, 
uh, whether you believe it or not definitely it will work right so think that uh, if i work in a company how my life will be if i become a manager how it will be if i become a ceo of this company if i manufacture a chip so that kind of uh, mindset and vision and exposure you should have it so physically you have to work out and mentally you have you have to think about that so please visit the office semiconductor office in the office if you are available so go there and take the appointment from the hr and talk to them so what are the expectations when you hire will you come to our college so you can call it and get connected with them who will stop you nobody can stop you right so and uh, so if you have keen interest in that just you can directly talk to the hr no problem they, they can just call them or you can go them and personally interact with them so what are the skills the uh, if you would like to join your enter, entering into md md competent directly why can't you interact with the md hr and call them so what are the skills i need so we you should have exposure what they do uh, next slide ritesh uh, hello <coughs> so how the work culture and salaries in the vlsi industry so actually here i didn't tell that you have to work 24 by 7 here we have the feasible to work 24 by 7 so our jobs will not uh, it's not like bank jobs it's not like uh, academics so it's not like 9 to 5 jobs our jobs are not 9 to 5 jobs you can go to office any time 365 days even whatever might be the festival whatever only one day it will be holiday that is the may day right only the may day the office will be closed and locked other than that 364 days it will be open you can access to internet and you have you can you can work so you have the feasibility work for the 24 by 7 even most of the companies have been giving uh, uh, this work from home before the covid also you have the feasibility to work from home and the growth so how the growth will be uh, it's a tremendous uh, tremendous growth I, I, they don't care about uh, what is your uh, uh, academics so if you have a knowledge and skill set definitely growth growth is there it's not kind of a government job so based on experience you will be getting the designation it's not the case so even the five years guy can become a manager five years guy can handle a one whole project there is no limit uh, for the growth you can directly uh, even you will be having so much of abroad opportunities so you, right so there are so many opportunities there is no limit for the growth in this industry vlsi industry so there are some people who did their just diploma and uh, doing miracles in the vlsi industry with their just diploma only so the, there are some semiconductor companies they go to the polytechnic colleges which is in the west maradpalli and they take the students from them so the diploma people they are doing wonders in the vls industry there are i know almost 20 persons are there from the uh, that's diploma people uh, they are they are doing revolutionary changes in the vls industry it is not about uh, there is no limit for the growth and how the project duration so it depends on the application right so if you buy any mobile any mobile uh, let us say just take the qualcomm snapdragon they'll release uh, every 3 months or 4 months the expectations of consumer will be different right so it depends on the application they do the project so normally the project duration from 3 months to the 1 year so if it is the biggest chip it take 1 year of time if it is a smaller chip 3 months of time right so if you want uh, if they want to do any uh, advanced features right so they just execute in the three chips, uh, three months so that is the reason you if you are keep on getting the versions of snapdragon versions right so why they are doing three months within three months or four months they are executing one more thing they might have added some extra feature and execute it and the last thing is demand and the salaries so you can observe uh, what how much the salaries and uh, what is the demand i am guy i am uh, guys i am telling that there is no limit for the salaries in the vls industry you should not compare the salaries with the software industry the software industry people who i am um, i'm live example i am giving the people the 20 years of software industry getting how much salary they are getting now the 10 years guy in the vls industry they will get it so there is no limit uh, for the salary also so it almost two times 
or even sometimes three times better than the salary why because the demand is huge if 1000 vls engineers are there there will be 10000 software engineers will be there so the competition is huge in the software industry so there is not only you have to work for the software industry there are there are so many people they will get it the company definitely if they just release the notification if they release any open position right there are 10000 people if you go to bangalore or hyderabad even sundays go to the infosys company or some other companies uh, go to madhapur right even sat uh, in saturdays and sundays you can find a huge line but if you go for any vls industry uh, there will not be any competition like only one for one position five people or six people will compete maximum but for the software industry almost 100 people or 200 people will compete for one position so because of that they'll reduce the salary but in the vlsa right so there are only few people even that also skilled people are very few so that is the reason companies will not hesitate to give the salaries to you there is no limit for your salaries so make it not done so if you are if you need more money uh, for the job right and the security purpose compared to software right uh, it will not at all impact you can say that uh, how the covid 19 uh, will impact the vls industry it is not at all because now we are talking in a zoom right so uh, you might have seen how the zoom uh, uh, expanded a lot uh, from the last three or four my five months how these many people are interacting daily right so they might they have they would have been already increased the number of servers uh, to store all these things right memory elements and store servers so for server is none, servers are nothing but the VLC components only. So don't believe, uh, you can't believe that from the last four or five months, right? There are so many people bought laptops, right? Uh, they, uh, there are some, so many people bought the smartphones to connect virtually, right? So the demand for electronics got increased in these critical situations also. Right? Compared to the software, right? Uh, uh, there is uh, uh, security is more uh, for these jobs i can say it's so green jobs at the same time so if you want uh, entering into the software industry it is not matter of three or four months for you uh, right uh, you can just learn a course even with this experience directly easily you can get into a job but you can there are so many people from the software that jumped into the vlsa it was a little bit difficult but if you would like to enter into the vlsa the software it will be a little bit easier but you can shift anywhere and not only you you have to be in the technical side also you have a growth in uh, uh, management side also you can become a project manager you can become an electronics journalist also or uh, you i mean after uh, exp gaining the experience of five years or ten years there are so many opportunities in the electronics field also you can become a uh, e-column journalist or you can become a program manager or you can become a sales executive right you have to sell the chips to the product companies so there are different opportunities in the vlsa field also not only the technical point of view so the demand is huge in the vlsa industry uh, next uh, next slide so what are the major companies so i just taken a snapshot uh, the source for uh, from the, the google i take it out not to taken so uh, based on the revenue right uh, intel samsung uh, so there are foundry and uh, fabulous companies and fabulous companies right so these are the top companies uh, which are working in the vlsa field so uh, you can observe that most of the headquarters in the us and south korea taiwan so there is no i'm sorry to say that there is no product based company in india uh, which delivers uh, products so most of the india people are uh, currently we are into the service vlsa service only uh, headquarters are completely in the US and South Korea and Japan and Europe only. So we work for them. Uh, next slide. So you can Google it. What are the top semiconductor companies? Yeah. So now, uh, what is the situation in uh, India? But as an Indian, uh, so you might have seen uh, uh, the advertise from the Geetam University, right? Uh, how your studies are changing, uh, helping uh, India how your how your academics help the uh, nation or help the world so that is the advertisement code they are promoting so how your ec electronics will help you to help you for the nation building so here uh, there are three components like design service fabrication 
so now all the designs are in the us or japan or europe so india is completely on service china and south korea are on fabrication this is the present situations so what is the next situation so the next situation has to be the design has to be in india service has to be in india the fabrication has to be in india so that should be our goal the major goal uh, so primary goal we should have india should have uh, these three components then only we can give employment to the all the ec students in our college in our country in our state so currently we are only in service based company service based uh, country currently right uh, but in the future we should work in such a way that the design the students i expect uh, uh the youngsters like you so you have to start over your own business or you have to uh, choose your career in the vlsa such that you can help others to entering into the vlsa industry yeah next slide uh so so recently august 9th of august 2020 right um there is a iesa indian electronics products market uh there is a uh, organization so what they are telling is uh, indian electronics and semiconductor association so uh, this is a recent uh, news so they are going to setting up a 4000 crore fabless seed fund with the global creating and supporting 100 successful fabless companies in next five years so from uh, 2020 to 2025 they are going to invest they are, they are thinking to invest 4000 crore rupees to establish 100 fabless companies like qualcomm and uh, amd like so those type of companies they are they are planning to establish so this is the vision they have taken so now the market how the vlsa market is uh, it's almost 20 billion uh, right side as, as if you can observe the total semiconductor component market is 20 billion now in 2019 but it will be growing to 45 billion in within five years it's almost double double within five years so you can see you can observe in next five years how the vlsa industry will be so uh, in today's uh, geopolitical situation there is a war between india and china right and china is uh, uh, stolen some data from india Right? because the, most of the chips are manufactured in china like uh, we using the software or the hardware they are stolen our data so that was a major concern uh, the government is planning to self reliance on the semiconductor chip products so that become that has become very critical china is already started their own fabs even us is going to start their own fab companies in the same way india is also going to fabricate not now not fabricate now but at least we need to design our products ourselves so that is they are going to planning so it's kind of atmanirbhar bharat uh, make in india so the concept of atmanirbhar bharat and uh, uh, so there is a good uh, future for the vlsa industry coming years so you are uh, so much fortunate right uh, once uh, bad uh, graduates right so you will be having a bright future coming future next slide uh, right we have i'll be closing uh, with this uh, session so uh, this is a shakti microprocessor i'm just it is an indigenous project pro, uh, processor so you can uh, google it risk v based on risk v risk v architecture it's an indigenous project shakti uh, you can google it uh, this is the first indian uh, uh, microprocessor iit uh, alumni iit people uh, manufactured this chip uh, you can google it uh, so you you can ask uh, why uh, uh, do we have any own own manufactured chip so uh, this is a proof of that shakti microprocessor from india so in, in it's not more uh, we are going to compete with intel and amd uh, within few years i have confidence in you and i have confidence in us yeah next slide yeah this is the atmanirbhar bharat so i'm just uh, by this i can just end the sessions so i'm just given what are the vlsa company list mnc intel mediatek microchip there are these many you can show this to your parents so these are the companies vlsa companies not only uh, the companies go to next slide i can show you other thing 
uh, these are the government organizations uh, who can work on uh, uh, this electronics industry uh, you can google it i just googled it and pasted it there nothing next slide and uh, wipro wipro is also a vls domain if you definitely would like to work in wipro or uh, infosys go and work there but in a vls division uh, wipro is also a vls division but it it work for intel so uh, wipro will take the projects from intel and it will it works for intel infosys have some small uh, uh, small division the vls industry it's all complete service based they will take the projects from uh, mensi and they'll execute it uh the lot of uh, even tcs how tata lxi it has service based company uh so but there are smaller groups so you may not expect much uh, uh, that much growth in that but uh, you can go for it uh, so if you get any tcs uh, campus placements you can ask them i would like to work in the vlsa domain uh so you can request them and you can enter into the vlsa domain even if you get a tcs if they have an opportunity you can go for another interview and you can get placed in the vlsa domain also so this is all uh, about my uh, my session uh, please uh, reach me out uh, thanks a lot for listening uh, patiently uh, even after the three breaks two breaks sorry uh, thanks a lot uh, thank you, you thank you very much kiran so before uh, i request all the participants to uh, put your queries in the chat box soon we have five more minutes you will be answering your queries if at all you have got any queries i will also provide his email id if possible i will ask him to provide his any one of the contact number also and uh, meanwhile while we receive the queries uh, kiran can you share your experience how you joined into the company and all those things and what is the exact job you do, do over there uh currently actually i Uh, i passed out at 2010 so after that uh, i took space of one year uh, i struggled one year to enter into the vls industry so after one year i got a seat in veda iit i cracked the exam so they conducted uh, they have given a training in 6 months after 6 months of uh, so after 6 uh, months of uh, training in veda iit i got uh, placed into a veda iit is it paid one or uh... uh it is free one uh, it is free uh, they sponsor it veda iit will give a free training on vls physical design and the logical design but uh, you have to crack the interview and the written examination at the time of uh, exam only we have to decide the fields or uh, depending upon the field you choose uh, the exam will be there or uh, will, be, will it be a general one no actually there will be some prelims exam will be there and mains exam will be there uh, so after clarify after qualifying your exam uh, you can decide yourself but before that you can choose but the exam will be same uh, but better to choose before that only so based on your marks also uh, you can place so if you are getting little less mark uh, you will get seat in a embed only Uh, so uh, now the requirements might have changed so you can just visit the website and you can directly call them so when i was there it was a requirement so i decided and selected for a particular option and written the exam exam paper will be same i think now they are coming to colleges it seems earlier it was that facility was not there okay now they are coming to colleges also yeah, yeah. they are recruiting yeah. from college itself yes 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 so but for that you need to more expose the knowledge in the digital electronics main uh, main part and uh, it's not uh, the direct questions so they will be have a tricky questions even in in the aptitude also uh, so you have to prepare in a gate uh, gate manner you can prepare for gate digital electronics subjects take the questions of gate and prepare for that or you can have some similar questions in the website also and there are there are so many people uh, who are uh, creating videos on veda iit question papers also you can visit in the google veda iit question papers they are giving trainings on those also kiran we have we have got a question from uh, one of the student rahul is amd providing any student career program uh currently no they normally mnc company said they have some certain uh, uh rules that they mainly go for uh, uh, iit and uh, nits uh, 
but uh, currently the career wise i can say they are not, they won't go to the all all, all companies okay so but they recruit from the service based companies okay uh, lastly what is the best option for our hyderabad students to get into after btech uh, after btech right so after btech for the hyderabad students the first option i can say uh, prepare for uh, uh, veda iit not only for the veda iit be good at uh, digital electronics and the ce and the aptitude test and the good institutes in hyderabad uh, jagruti technology is also there so now the covid right the current situation uh, uh, there is some lagging uh, but uh, it's your right time to brush up your skills uh, you can refer the jagruti infosys uh, web page and veda iit web page and the cdac web page cdac hyderabad web page and uh, you can connect with the people who know uh, in the industry sure, and sure that's all